Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Kryptonite Insight X3 and XR bike light set. Although Kryptonite is best known for their wide selection of bike locks, they've recently released the Insight bike light series. Today we're going to be looking at the most affordable variations in the lineup, which is the X3 headlight and the XR taillight. What sets apart the inside lights from others on the marketplace is that they focus on beam optics rather than just raw output and as a result, these carry lux ratings instead of lumens, which measures the actual light brightness on the ground rather than just the output uh, of the LED itself. Now packaging wise, really simple. You have the black and the yellow color scheme, so high contrast. Uh, both the headlight and taillight can be interacted with. You can actually hit the power buttons and actually see the lens on the headlight, which is one of the best features. So really nicely done. Uh, the little graphic on the back illustrates why you want to use a, a beam cutoff style light as it focuses the light on the ground rather than a giant uh, cone shape, which would blind uh, other cars or cyclists on the road. Let's go ahead and take it out of the box. And while I do that, we'll go over the specs. Retail price on this is $74.95. They can be bought separately as well. The headlight by itself is $55, while the taillight is $28. And one of the best features of the headlight is the dual spheric lens. And you can see it's actually a sphere where on the inside it's sculpted specifically to focus the light down. And you can almost see the LED on the inside and how it kind of gets uh, kind of morphed by the lens. Output wise, you have 30 lux for the headlight and you have 0.6 lux for the rear. You can't simply convert lux to lumen as it takes into account the beam pattern and depends on where you measure it. These are micro USB rechargeable. Both of them have mode memory, so when you turn them off and turn them on, it remembers where you were. The headlight uses a four LED design. You have the main LED on the front and then three battery status indicators on top. The taillight uses three LEDs. You have the main LED on top, a guide LED, and then a low battery status indicator. Inside the box, you get the headlight with the mount already attached and simply pops off. You have the taillight. You have the taillight rubber strap to mount it to your seat post or saddle. A single micro USB charging cable and then two instruction manuals, one for the headlight and one for the taillight. Now let's take a second to look at the weight of the headlight and taillight. If I put just the headlight, that comes in at 80 grams. The mount for the handlebar, that comes in at 18 or 16 grams. The taillight, that comes in at 22, and then if I add the little rubber strap, comes in at 26, so pretty light overall. Now let's take a look at the fit and finish of the Insight X3 headlight and XR taillight. Now if we start with the headlight, the most striking thing about this is the dual spheric lens. You can see it's a spherical lens on the outside, and then on the inside it has a non-spherical design that's meant to really focus the light downward. And you can almost see the LEDs on the inside of here and how it kind of deforms as you go up and down. Color scheme wise, both the headlight and taillight have a similar black and gray design with kryptonite simply written on the sides. You can see the accent colors on the headlight and then a vertical strip on the taillight. They're pretty compact too. You can see it fits in my hand. It's all plastic though, so it is pretty light and it feels a little bit cheaper than some of the metal uh, headlights you can get. In terms of the housing profile, you have a round profile on the front that matches the lens and a square at the rear. You can see there's actually side windows here. And if I were to turn on the light, these actually reflect light through the lens and that provides a little more safety on the road. So even if you're not in front of the light, you can actually see the side windows do a great job of ensuring people will see you. On the back, you have the micro USB port. And this is great for charging. So you can actually leave it on the bike since it's really easy to access. On the top, you have a single button interface. It's a nice rubber grip with three LEDs here. When you turn this on, the three LEDs actually correspond to the battery status. So as it goes down, you'll go down to one LED that might even blink. Underneath, you have a very simple mount design. And you can see it's a little slot 
Reminds me a lot of clipless pedals. So now if we take the mount, you can see it has two little uh, lips on here. You simply place it uh, inside the back end first and then drop it down and you hear the nice click. So holds it in place pretty well. I wish they would have gone with a Garmin or GoPro adapter. It's not currently offered, but hopefully they will offer that because you currently cannot run this either upside down or on an out front mount. So you do have to use a proprietary mount. Uh, releasing the light is simply pressing the little button here and then lifting off. So really easy. Uh, the mount itself is toolless. So you can see it's a cable tie style design. You simply push this button down and you can pull the cable tie through to accommodate different bike uh, handlebar diameters. Has a little grip in here too to prevent marring your uh, handlebars. To tighten it, you simply pull and you can hear the nice ratcheting. When you want to lock it in place, you simply pull the lever up and that's about it. They also offer a feature to rotate it. So you can see if you loosen the screw, I'll let you actually rotate this side to side and once you have the right position, you can tighten it down. So it's about 10 degrees each side, which is a nice little extra flexibility. If we go to the tail light, you can see a nice narrow form factor, fairly thin and again, pretty lightweight. Similar color scheme, so they go really well together. You have a side window here as well, and you can see if I turn it on, you can actually get a little light through there, which helps for side visibility. A simple button interface, again, single button to cycle through. A long press long uh, to turn on, long press to turn it off. The lens design is also really nice. You can see here, it has this almost circular shape to it for the top LED. And what this does is if I turn on the light, you can see it has a very horizontal design uh, despite when you look at it, it looks vertical. So it actually spreads the light out and helps uh, with your visibility. Now this is a three LED design. So you have the top LED and then you have an LED for the guide area. And you can see if I turn this on, it really helps illuminate a larger portion of the body to ensure you're visible. There's also a low battery indicator here once the battery goes low. And you can also rotate this mount, which is pretty interesting. So this is a, stand, a standard mount. Uh, it has little hooks here with the rubber strap. Uh, you simply run this through and around your frame. So really easy to use. Uh, what's unique here is that if you loosen that screw, you can actually rotate this and then mount this sideways. So you could potentially put this on your saddlebag, your rails, or a backpack. So nice to have that flexibility. It looks a little weird to me sideways. Uh, with this shape to it since it looks better uh, vertically but it's nice to have that flexibility now let's take a look at the light output of the headlight and taillight starting out with the x3 headlight you can see the beam shape is very unique it has a very narrow beam but with a sharp cutoff and you can see it has a brighter spot near the top now if we take a look at the light on the ground you can see this ends up with a very bright spot about 10 or 20 meters ahead of the bike with a dark spot around you now you can see it's quite dim, even in the high steady mode, which we typically rode with. But the nice thing is you have quite a few flash ops, and in particular, I really like the night flash and the long run times that the flashes offer. Now the taillight has multiple flashes as well. And you can see the low steady mode is not bad either. It also has similar style flashes. You have the daytime pulse, which is nice and not distracting. And the nighttime pulse again, which is great to ride at night. Instead of flashing on and off, it has a nice gradual effect. And then you have eco flash for up to 36 hours. Now again, the headlight on the road, you can see the beam shape is quite unique. It is narrow though, it's about a car length wide. And I wouldn't really recommend this for dark nighttime riding. As you can see, it's quite dim. And with the dark spots ahead of your bike and to the sides, making sharp turns can be a little bit daunting. However, if you do a lot of commuting, you can see the light does pretty well. And with the focus beam, you're not going to be blinding other people on the road. So now let's do a little comparison between the kryptonite inside lights and other lights on the market. What I have here is the X3, X6, and X8. What I really like about what kryptonite has done is you can see both feature-wise and size-wise, they're really well differentiated. The X3 is 30 lux, a no-mode indicator with the dual spheric lens. The X6 is a larger version of that, double the power, and now you get the runtime display as well as a mode indicator. So the, as the price goes up, you get more uh, quantifiable features. 
And then between the X6 and the X8, the X8 has the larger screen, different optics that are US only, a little more premium look that corresponds to the higher price, larger side window, and again, 80 lux versus the 60 for the X6, so quite a bit brighter. Uh, with the X8, you can definitely run it in a media mode pretty happily at nighttime, while the X3 and X8, X6, I found myself usually in high mode all the time, especially on dark trails. For commuting, uh, these are better options for commuting, while a more serious dark, uh, dark trail, dark road, I prefer the X8. Now mount-wise, the X8 and X3 and 6 all have the same style mount. Uh, the 6 and the 3 share the smaller one, while the X8 has this more wide version that corresponds to the larger size. Comparing to that, uh, comparing that mount to say the Phoenix style cam design, you can see this simply drops in over and then tightens, has a similar sliding mechanism with additional uh, side to side play with that little screw you can loosen. I like the kryptonite design a little bit better over that as it's more compact, uh, but it is harder to release as you can see with the uh, Phoenix, you have this large lever that sticks out. So a little bit give or take. Uh, what I really like are the Magic Shine lights. Uh, so these are the Alti 1000 and that's the Alti 2000. Uh, these actually have a Garmin compatible mount, so you don't have to use a proprietary mount. And you can see it puts out more power than the uh, Inside Light series, but it has a basic beam shape. So you can see when you turn it on, it's just a cone. So it definitely blinds others on the road, uh, but it does feel more premium too. It has the uh, metal housing on, they are a little bit more expensive. So what's great about the inside lights is that they bring uh, better beam optics and more affordable pricing. Now, if you compare the X8 versus the uh, Alti 2000, you can see they also have a better screen on the Kryptonite, more information, larger grade display while the Alti 2000 just has a small mode indicator and battery status. I also like the side lights on the Kryptonite uh, versus the simple uh, beveled edges on the Magic Shine. There are also other lights on the market like the Phoenix BC21R. This has a replaceable battery, which is a great feature, something you don't typically see, same proprietary design, a little more compact form factor uh, you can see these lenses really take up a lot of space. So if you just go with a traditional lens, but they're really basic vertical deflector, uh, a lot more compact in size and metal as well. Now let's go over the pros and cons for the X3 and XR light set. We like the advanced optics. It's great that Kryptonite is invested in uh, beam optics instead of just raw output. It's not very common to see this kind of optics at this price point. We also like the compact form factors for both lights. The X3 headlight doesn't take much space on your handlebar, while the XR tail light is quite thin and narrow. We also like the battery status indicator on the headlight. This is a feature a lot of commuter style bike headlights drop off and it's really annoying to run out of uh, battery mid-ride. Some of the cons are the fact that neither the X3 or XR are particularly bright, which is why we wouldn't really recommend this for nighttime or rural riding. This is better as a commuter light where you have other lights or city lights to fill in the gaps. The other con is that the headlight uses a proprietary mount instead of a Garmin or GoPro compatible style mount, which means you have to use the supplied mount instead of using an out in front or an existing mount. And also the taillight does not have a battery status indicator, it only has the low battery warning. And even though it has long run times, it's great to see at least a two level battery status indicator. Taking everything into account, we'd give the X3 and XR an 8.4 out of 10. Kryptonite really offers optimized optics and affordable price with this set. You can definitely get brighter lights at this price point, but it'd be hard to find something with a beam cutoff. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the content. You can see more from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com, as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.